Church of St. Thrace, uh, where we gather together in faith. We are here to uh, offer this Mass, this Requiem Mass, for the happy repose of the soul of Margaret uh, <coughs> McElligot, uh, who lived in this parish for many years. And our first duty, of course, as we come, is to offer what sympathy we can to the grieving family, to Johnny especially, the grieving husband, to her own family, Sean, Jerry and Valerie. Uh, we extend our sympathy to her sister, Sister Noreen, who is out of the country, to uh, Mary, Billy and Tom, New York, to Jerry, Paddy and Peter, Tralee, and of course in this Mass we also include uh, her brother John, who's, who's died. We also uh, think of the grandchild James, daughter in laws, Deirdre, Sandra, friends and relations, former work colleagues, and many more. As we, my, myself and Father Foley here, Father Lina, uh, and you, the people of God, we offer what sympathy we can uh, to all these people and more who. Uh, who miss her very much and who are very saddened by her passing. But we are, all, we are also people of faith. We're here to pray for the happy repose of her soul so that she'll have an eternity with God because she lived her life, a Christian life. She followed the path of Christ all during her life. And as we begin this Mass, we know that we need the forgiveness of Christ for himself so that we can worthily offer this Mass uh, on, uh, to God on behalf of our immortal soul. And so we say with great faith, I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, and my great in my thoughts and in my words, what I've done and what I feel to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, as Mary of a virgin, all the angels and saints, you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord of mercy, Lord, Lord, Lord. Christ of mercy, Christ mercy. Lord, Lord of mercy. mercy. Let us pray. O God, who are mercy for sinners and the happiness of your saints, give, we pray, to your servant, Margaret, a share with your chosen ones in the blessedness you give, so that on the day of resurrection, Freed from the bonds of mortality, she may come before your face. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May be seated now. People who are doing the readings will approach the pulpit now, and no one will sing the usual psalm in between the readings. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, 
They did appear to die. They were going, looking, looked like a disaster. They are leaving us like annihilation, but they are in peace. If they experience punishment, men see it. Their hope was rich with immortality, slight with their affliction, great with blessings be. God has put them to the test and proved them worthy. Be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. When the time comes for his visitation, they will shine out and sparks run through the stubble, so they will. They shall judge nations, rule over peoples, and the Lord will be their king forever. They who trust in him will understand the truth. There was a faithful will live with him in love for grace and mercy await those he has chosen. Lord of the Lord. The Lord's my shepherd, I not want. He makes me down to love. first letter of St. John. In this life we have the privilege of being God's children. In the next life it will be even better. We shall see him face to face. Think of that love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children. And that is what we are. Because the world refused to acknowledge him, therefore it does not acknowledge us. My dear people, we are already for the children of God but what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he really is. The word of the Lord. says the Lord, that whoever believes in the Son shall have eternal life, and that I shall raise him up on the last day. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. 
If there were not, I should have told you. I'm going now to prepare a place for you, and after I have gone and prepared your place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Let me see it now for a few minutes, please. <clears throat> I'd like to um, tell the family that I was talking to Father Lawler uh, this morning, and as you know, he's in fact my home now, he's a retired priest. But had things been otherwise, he would be here today because he had, he was here for a long time, over 20 years, and he would even have known Margaret better than myself. I was glad to be told uh, about Margaret's many interests, and uh, they included her life in the GPO in the late 60s, how she worked at the Kerry Co-op in the lab there, how she um, threw her all, a lot of her energy into farming, and how she would know a lot of people, people in farming organizations, and because of her interests in horses and greyhounds, coursing, going to Clonmel, going to the race meeting in Listowel and Galway, she would have known a lot of people, owners of horses and so on, down through the years. And they tell me that there are people who are happy and thankful to her to, when they met her at the race course because she always had something, some certain winner. Uh, wherever she found it, and she was generous in sharing whatever information she had. So I just mentioned that because the mind boggles in a way. She must have been a woman of great energy, and she wasn't, uh, as they say, shy of taking on has, uh, big tasks during her life. She had her uh, life here in Poulard, 1971, coming to Poulard, the wife of uh, Johnny, and uh, apart from that, she had her public life, people knew her and so on. And uh, she was somebody who uh, believed that life is for living. Anything she could do or anything she was interested in, she went about it. I came to the parish in 1994, uh, down, came up from Kilgarvan that time, and uh, as usual, Father Stack, who was my, the previous um, parish priest, he had a list of people there. Uh, I'd attend to them on the first Friday. And it so happens on the first first Friday of my existence here in, in uh, Valley Dunahoo, I was going over to minister to a great uh, woman, Maud Herron, who is well known for her interest at that time uh, in politics and before that she was involved in the fight for Irish freedom, fine lady she was. And when I met her she was confined to the house and her principal carer, her only carer maybe, was Margaret herself. Margaret was there to open the door for me and I could see that uh, Margaret visited that house several times a day, looked after uh, Maud very well, kept her very, very happy, and uh, she proved herself to be a good nurse to Maud during that time. And uh, later on, uh, when we had station masses in the parish here, and I proposed to Margaret that we might have a station in her house, she was only too glad to open the door to myself, to the Lord, for a very memorable station which I had uh, at that time. Unfortunately, uh, I just knew her for five years. I was transferred uh, to Ballybunion, and believe it or not, 25 years later, uh, last week as a matter of fact, uh, her good husband Johnny invited me to visit her home. And this time the visit was 
to give Margaret the last rites. And as I went in, I was happy to talk to her. She told me about her illness. About five years or so, she was playing with a serious illness. And she praised very much, praised very highly, the people of the palliative care unit in Tralee. The nurses told her that she had come to the penultimate stage of her illness. Margaret accepted the words, she understood them, and she was able to talk about them, and she was smiling as she told me all about uh, the illness. And I gathered from the way she spoke to me that she was somebody that was resigned, resigned to God. She got a life from her God. Life is a gift of God, and now God is taking her to himself. It was as if uh, she understood that God had told her her work was done, and he was inviting her to come to himself. She was pleasant and smiling, no tears, and it made my interview very easy for me. And in her own mind, she was sad, I, could, I, I knew that, to have to leave her lovely home, but at the same time accepting the will of God, which takes precedence over all our wills. Time and time again, people are asking the question, why uh, can some people live to be 100 as they do, other people die very young, why, why, what is all that about? That question was put to the Lord, the Lord refused to answer it. But what he did do was, he said, never mind about the time you're going to be called. As he put it, he said, it's for you and for me to adopt the right path in life, to follow the Lord and take the directions from him, and to be sure that if we follow the Lord and follow his path, that path will lead to an eternal happiness. I think of uh, Margaret too as a homemaker and we, when we think of homes of course the home is more than bricks and mortar and slates and so on. A home is a place where a small community live in love and in helpful relationships for many years and Margaret was one of those. She shared her love not only with her family but also with the people of the locality with Maud especially whom I've mentioned, and anybody at all who wanted help from Margaret, she was there and was generous about it. The Lord also said that our homes, and Margaret had many of them, I suppose she had three or four homes anyway, one in Dublin, one in Coolaclary, two in uh, Coulard, all these homes, fine homes, and uh, kept together by the strength and the uh, dedication of Margaret herself, the Lord reminded us that those homes are temporary. Those homes cannot be ours forever. Those homes will be taken from us. And the Lord has promised us instead a permanent home in heaven. That's the simple faith by which we live by and by which we are, I suppose, consoled in these times. God's plan takes precedence over ours. Again, we find it again and again. And then when it comes to the question of suffering, and she had five years of it, and uh, some days I'm sure were very difficult for her, some days very painful and so on. And we find in the Bible something that gives us uh, an insight into what suffering is all about. Suffering is there to be added to the suffering of Christ. And the totality of the suffering of humanity is there to make salvation possible for the people of this world. I once read a, a book many years ago, a book about the life of Pius XII, he was the Pope during the war, and he went through all the work that he did. He was a great diplomat, he made concordats all over Europe, including a uh, concordat with Hitler in 1932, but he said that during his account of his life, uh, he had serious illnesses for the last few years of his life and this is what he said and I suppose his words are very very true and we take notice of them. He said of all the things that he did during his life, the last few years of his life, 
were more conducive to his salvation and the salvation of the world than all the high-profile work that he did during his life. That was Pius XII, a great pope at, uh, at that time. And so, as we mourn the loss of Margaret to her family and to the people of the locality and the people in Oban Goulard and elsewhere, we are people who mourn, but we are people who are not despondent because we know what we are about. We are here to pray for the happy repose of Margaret. May her soul go to God. We know that God is waiting for her. And then, of course, we, with all <coughs> due respect, we place her body into the family plot down in Gale, where it will remain until the day of her glorious resurrection. This is the marvellous thing about our faith. That's the faith that we live by. And I imagine that, uh, even though the question didn't come up, uh, Margaret lived beside a great site of uh, worship all during her life. It goes back a long way. And I mentioned St. Bat's well down there. And thanks be to God, it's well done up by the loca locals and it's, uh, people are visiting it from time to time, especially during the end of April. And any time I pass there, there's a car there, people come up and they go in and they do the rounds and the rounds are carefully uh, described. I'm sure Margaret too would have <coughs> an interest in the healing power of the waters of St. Bat's well. We think also of the communion of saints, which is a great help to us because the people on this earth, the believers here, people in purgatory, people in heaven. There is a union between us all through Christ himself so that the people in purgatory, people in heaven can help us and we in turn, we can help the people in purgatory and we can all help each other. David himself, King David, who lived many years before Christ as you know, he had this to say when he lost a child. And when the child died, he was his opinion of the whole event was this. He prayed for the child while the child had a chance to live. And then he decided, he told the helpers there, he said, well, he says, uh, his child had gone to God. That child cannot return, but he would eventually go to meet her in heaven. So there's where we stand as well. When our relatives leave us, they cannot return to us. All we do is we know we can return to them, and that is our hope, where there is always waiting for us a glorious uh, re uh, reunion, a glorious and uh, spirit of union. Think also of the statements of the saints, which I find very, very, very helpful indeed. Uh, one saint, which I forgotten his name now, I mentioned him, but anyway, he would put it this way, that the suffering we endure during this life, they are the keys to heaven itself. What a wonderful statement. And uh, also, only last week, we were presented by a special detail about Our Blessed Lady herself. Our Lady had a special title, Our Lady of Sorrows, the Dolors of Our Lady. As a matter of fact, there's a um, hospital in Lourdes, which is called the Hospital of the Seven Dollars. What a wonderful title. And Our Lady, they mention in her, uh, as the, the church itself reminds us, that she had seven principal dolors, seven principal sorrows. In other words, Our Lady went through sorrow herself. Our Lady knows what we are going through. Our Lady is there uh, to help us. And I was thinking along those lines, as I said, the rosary last night with the family over in Coulard. We call in Our Lady because she understands us, she knows what we're going through, and she is there to give us the help that uh, we need. Margaret herself proved herself a great patient. She bore her, her suffering with a great deal of uh, patience. She was an insp inspiration, not only to her family, but to the people of the new locality. And she was all that, because all during her life, she followed the path that the Lord had gave, given her. She was full of hope, and she knew that once her 
own home was taken away from her, that was awaiting for her eternal joy. St. Paul himself was often of the same opinion. He says, take what comfort you can from the life of Christ and the life of our Blessed Lady. And all that remains then is uh, for us to accept with gratitude the teaching of the Gospel and accept with gratitude the life that the Lord has given us as Margaret did during her life. She, her life is over, but another life is beginning, a life with God. Her temporary life is ended, but what is now to begin is an eternal life with God. And the Bible itself reminds us that eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man to conceive what man has prepared for those who love him. So we can only guess what heaven is like, but we do know it's beyond our wildest imagination. It's eternal, it's uh, eternal happiness, and indeed uh, that's what our lives here on earth is all geared to. So without any more ado, we thank the Lord for the faith that passed on to us from the people who went before us, and we begin the prayers of the special prayers of the Mass now, prayers which were uh, selected by members of the family only last evening, so I'll invite them up to the pulpit now to share those wonderful prayers with us. Dear Lord, help us to be people of faith, people who follow the path that the Lord has given us, as Margaret followed her path carefully during her life, the path that Christ gave her. God of all consolation, help us in our grief to comfort one another. May we find light in time of darkness and faith in time of doubt. Lord, hear us. Today we are saddened by the loss of one whom we have loved. May our hope in the resurrection and the promise of eternal life bring us comfort and turn our sadness into joy. Lord, hear us. Amen. We pray for the family and friends of Max in these difficult days. May the Lord be their strength and their consolation. Lord, hear us. Amen. Mags touched our lives in different ways. Help us keep alive the values and the ideals she put before us. Lord, hear us. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith that we may be gathered together in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. We conclude our prayers by our <coughs> uh, to our Blessed Lady in our time of sadness. And we know that Our Lady will take all our petitions to her Divine Son. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And because of COVID, we, were, we won't have any uh, offertory procession. We'll proceed with the offertory now. Bread we bring you, Lord, our bodies labor, and wine we offer you, our spirits breathe. We do not ask you, Lord, who is my neighbor, but stand you now. 
my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> be near, O Lord, we pray, to your servant Margaret, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to her, or any human fault have affected her, it may, by your loving gift, be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for it is at your summons that we come to birth, by your will that we are governed, and at your command that we return on account of sin to that earth from which we came. And when you give the sign, we who have been redeemed by the death of your Son shall be raised up to the glory of his resurrection. And so, with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, and death for your glory, who's on the highest, blessed is he who comes who's on in the highest. <clears throat> the priest of prayer number two, you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of our holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead. He is Lord. Every knee. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember Lord your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Ray our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant Margaret whom you have called from this world to yourself, grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our own brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all, we pray. And with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph of Spouse, with the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever <coughs> and ever.
the Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom of power and glory Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant to peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you all. You can say, Peace be with you to the person beside you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and mercies. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and mercies. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and mercies. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the world and so to the end. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Blood of Christ, keep me safe in the covenant. Let perpetual light shine upon them with your saints forever. For you are merciful, eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. Let perpetual light shine upon them, and with your saints forever, for you are rich in mercy.
sunrise light up the sky casting its shadows near and on this morning bright though it be I feel the shadows near me are you chosen last night by a member of the family, so if the person who has the reflection, please continue. <clears throat> Death is not the end. Death is nothing at all. I've only slipped away into the next room. Whatever we were to each other, we still are. Call me by my old familiar name. Speak to me in the easy way which we used. Laugh as we always laughed at the little jokes we enjoyed together. Play, smile, think of me, pray for me. Let my name be a household word that it always was. Let it be spoken without effort. Life means all that it ever meant. It's the same as it ever was. There is absolute unbroken continuity. Why should I be out of your mind because I'm out of your sight? But I am waiting for you for an interval, somewhere very near, just around the corner. All is well, nothing is past, nothing is lost. One brief moment and it will all be as it was before. Only better, infinitely happier, and forever we will all be one in Christ. I'm sure Margaret would like us to include in our prayers also today um, <clears throat> the people in palliative care in Tralee. She had a great time to them, very thankful to them, and she would like us to include them in, her, in our prayers this morning, prayers of this Mass. We bless you, Lord, and we praise you for all your gifts and all your blessings. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thy. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Margaret may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now it's uh, Sean's turn. Please come to the pulpit. Have some words for us. I'd like to thank everybody for coming here today uh, to our mother's funeral. 
And there are a number of people I'd like to thank for all their help over the last number of days, weeks and months, um, starting with Father Hegarty, who was very good to visit my mother on a number of occasions before she passed away, Drs Clarkson, Dr Bamry, Dr Sheehan and Dr Billy O'Connor, who cared for her during her illness, the staff at the dialysis unit in the University Hospital of Kerry and the palliative care unit who cared for her so lovingly, the community nurses and the Irish Cancer Society nurses who tended to mom in her final days and final hours. I'd like to thank her colleagues, her former colleagues, relatives and friends and neighbours who were so loving to my mother in the last number of weeks and visited on a number of occasions which so, meant so much to her in, her in her final days. I'd also like to thank Billy and Red, the undertaker, for the help he has given us over the last number of days. Finally, I'd like to say thanks to Mom for the support, guidance and advice and love throughout our lives. Mom was one that was loved by so many. She always knew how to brighten somebody's day. Her outlook in life was inspiring. Her memory will never fade. Mom, you're at peace now. You've no more pain, no more suffering, which you bore so courageously throughout your illness. To finish, I'd like to share a condolence good friend of our family sent in the last number of days. We all feel it really captured our mother's interest in life and her outlook in life. With a keen equine interest and as an ardent follower of the leash, the island next week and Kilflin course in next weekend will be a poor place without Margaret. No more sighting of the hair, giving a final jink before the escape, or weaving through jostling punters to get on Berkey before the off. May her arrival at the Pearly Gates prove as welcoming as that at the lodge at the gates of Powerstown Park, or at the turnstiles at the island racetrack on the southerly tip of the barony of Irochney Connor. And I'd finish with a quote from Peter O'Sullivan, Mom was the best we've seen for a long time. Sleep some until we meet again. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister Margaret may come to the eternal uh, table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And my Father, Seamus, now to say the prayers of final farewell. Before we now go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister Margaret. May this farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope that one day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ has conquered all things, destroys even death itself. And now her mortal remains would be blessed with holy water and honoured with incense as a mark of acknowledgement that she was a child of God from the moment of her baptism. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for her. Now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see her again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. 
Our response to this is a prayer. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you take you to himself and may the angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest given to her, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine upon her. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Margaret in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks again for the many blessings which you bestowed upon her in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant Margaret and help us who remain to comfort and support one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with your sister forever. Amen. In peace, we will now take our sister Margaret to her place of rest. Margaret, may the angels lead you now into paradise and may the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May choirs of angels welcome you, and where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find the eternal rest. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> now the final blessing for our Mass and our celebration. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is now ended. Let's go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our sister Margaret has gone to her rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome her to the table of God's children in heaven, and with faith and hope in eternal life, let us assist her with our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord also for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with our sister, and together may we meet Christ Jesus when he is our life, appears in glory. We read in sacred scripture, Come you whom my Father has blessed, says the Lord, inherit the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. O God, by whose mercy the faithful departed find rest, bless this grave. And send your holy angel to watch over it, as we bury here the body of our sister, deliver her soul from every bond of sin, that she may rejoice in you with your saints forever. Lord Jesus Christ, by your own three days in the tomb, we hear the graves a sign of hope that promises resurrection, even as it claims our mortal bodies. Grant that our sister may sleep here in peace until you waken her to glory, for you are the resurrection and the life. She will see you face to face, and in your light will see light, and know the splendor of God, for you live and reign forever and ever. Because God has chosen to call our sister Margaret from this life to himself, we commit her body to the earth. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he is risen the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our sister to the Lord that the Lord may embrace her in peace and raise up her body on the last day. Lord bless her and keep her. <coughs> the Lord uh, the Lord bless her and uh, keep her. May the Lord uh, make his face to shine upon her and be gracious to her. The Lord lift his 
countenance upon her and give her uh, peace. Dear friends, in reverence, let us pray to, to God, the source of all mercies. You raise the dead to life, give to our sister eternal life. We pray to the Lord, Lord of mercy. Lord, you console Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for M Margaret and dry the tears of those who weep. We pray to the Lord, Lord of mercy. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of Margaret, that our faith be our consolation in eternal life of hope. We pray to the Lord, Lord of mercy. We pray for all who are buried in this cemetery, may their suffering be lessened, their joy be increased. The light of glory shine on them and may they rest in peace. We pray to the Lord, Lord of mercy. We long for the coming of God's kingdom. Let us now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God of holiness and power, accept our prayers and behalf of our son and Margaret. Be not caught of deeds against her, for in her heart she desired to do your will. And so far to you to talk to your people now, so you may your mercy join you to the angels in heaven, and this we ask through Christ our Lord. Living God, for we know life proceeds, and by whose hand the dead are raised again. Do you bless us, do you wish always to hear us, accept the prayers we offer in sadness for your son and Margaret, deliver us all from death. We are among your saints, and clear them with the name of salvation to enjoy forever the delights of your kingdom, and this we ask through Christ our Lord. We do not as we ask the Lord to bless us, merciful Lord. You know the anguish of the sorrowful, and you attend to the prayers of the wounded. Hear the people who cry out to you in their need, and strengthen their hope in their lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And we pray for the Lord to join us to lead us in a decade of the rosary. First mystery, the resurrection. We pray that Jesus is the resurrection of our life and the resurrection that and the life that Margaret now shares with him. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy be thy right as it is in heaven. For the grace the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou, and so on, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. For the grace the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou, and so on, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners now and at the hour of our death. Holy Mary, for the grace the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou, and so on, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, for the grace the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou, and so on, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. May the prayers of Mary, the mother of God, who stood at the cross as her son was dying, help those who mourn for Margaret. And accompany all of us in the time of need. Eternal rest granted to her, O Lord, that perpetual light shine upon her, may she rest in peace. May our soul and all the souls of the faithful departed. Through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. I believe we have a hymn now to proceed with. Okay.
Seeing Uncleberry was great for us. I can say that our son is sleeping in the night, and so yep, that's a huge win. Um, but the experience in using the app and just yeah, the support yeah. that we're able to get in using Uncleberry has been really nice. Uncleberry has given us a nice back, but our days back also. That was the best thing we had on day. What I really like about the Huckleberry app after putting
Finally, I am inviting you all to the Arms Hotel immediately for refreshments. Okay.